Hello everyone, Tango here, and today I'd like to show you a brand new little concept for an extremely simple, ultra low tech, and very cheap Wither Skeleton farm. Now the goal of this farm is to be super, super easy to build. It is not going to get you hundreds of Wither Skulls, but it is going to make hunting for Wither Skeletons a whole ton easier. So this simple concept is going to take advantage of the fact that Wither Skeletons are taller than all other mobs spawning inside the Nether Fortresses. Alright, so to use this ultra simple farm, all you gotta do is walk back and forth down this pathway here, and just give a good look at any Wither Skeletons you see that have spawned on the side platforms. And they're gonna aggro you and come running over to you, but they can't reach you. Check both sides, no mobs can aggro you. You see the blaze won't, there's blaze right there, but they can't hit me. No, no other mobs will hit me. Just keep on walking down here, okay? Keep pulling the zombie or the skeletons as you go. Okay, we're gonna grab that guy down there. He'll aggro us. And once you get down here, just belly up to this iron bar here. And we're gonna take advantage of these skeletons AI here. And they're gonna walk straight up on top of those hoppers there. And just wait for us to slice them up to bits with our looting smite sword or whatever we got. Chop them all up. As you kill them, they move even closer to the middle here. It's just, it's just a great thing, okay? Once you're done, just go ahead and check in the chest and maybe you will get lucky. So the trick here is that the wither skeletons can just barely see over those stairs causing them to aggro you as you go by they'll try to attack you even though they'll never be able to get to you where all the other mobs simply can't see over the stairs because they're just too short and they'll never even know you're there now there is one very important rule when using this farm and that is do not jump because as soon as you jump that's when the blaze are going to aggro you and you're just gonna be very sad unfortunately now, even if we put a slab above us here, it will, you know, make it so we can't jump as high, but all it takes is just a, the ever so slightest increase in our height and the blaze can see us. So even that slab won't stop that, unfortunately. All right. So by far your most important decision when building this farm is going to be deciding where to build it. You're going to want to find a fairly large nether fortress and then try to find a section of it that is around as few spawnable blocks as possible. Now, obviously, there's always going to be a ton around, but just do your best to definitely minimize that, and it's going to really improve the rates in the end. Typically, uh, fortresses that are over large oceans of lava are going to be your best bet, so look for those. So the thing to keep in mind with this farm is that it can be built anywhere inside the entire bounding box of the Nether Fortress. If you don't know what a bounding box is, imagine a box, a rectangular box, that contains every single piece of the Nether Fortress. Every tunnel, every corridor, every room, everything. Naturally, this box is going to be big. Yeah, something like that. So what I've got here is a client mod that clearly shows the bounding box of all Nether Fortresses in the area. It was made by a buddy of mine named Irity, and if you want to check it out, I will leave a link in the description down below. I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, one of the cool things is it actually allows you to toggle the individual components of a Nether Fortress, which is pretty cool stuff too. You can kind of see how that was assembled piece by piece. Now, obviously, I've removed a lot of it for the sake of this tutorial, which is something you might want to consider doing as well. Now you'll notice a lot of times the bounding box of another fortress will extend pretty much further than you would expect based on what the components are showing here. Like in this case right here, you, you know, the bounding box is sticking way out over here where you wouldn't expect it given that the components seem to end all over there. And that's because the bounding box, if you keep, keep in mind, it is all of the components of the fortress. And you can see there's another one here that stuck out a little bit. So with a little bit of exploration, even without this mod, you can you can easily find the full extent and the full bounding box of your nether fortress, and it's totally worth it because you can definitely take advantage of it and figure out the optimal space to put your farm. Now, once you've identified the section of the nether fortress bounding box that you want to build it in, you're going to have to figure out which direction you want to actually build the farm in and how long you want to make it. Now, the longer the better in this case, okay? The longer it is, the more likely you are to get automatic despawns as you go from one end to the other, and that is going to give you a constant fresh supply of new spawns as you keep going back and forth, which is very much a good thing. Okay, moving on to how to build this thing, and if you haven't figured it out yet, it is incredibly simple. So here we are in a void world. I'm going to do it this way just so it's easier for you all to see. So getting started here, the base of your farm has to be nether brick blocks. You got to use the full blocks here because Wither Skeletons will not spawn on slabs, so just keep that in mind. The block that you're going to be walking on down the full length here needs to be a daylight sensor, and that's because it has a, a very unique height, which is a little bit shorter than a half slab. If you were to make that a half slab there, you would be a little bit too tall, and the blaze on the outside spawn areas would shoot you and burn you and make you fried up, and you'd be very sad, and it would not be good. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much, you get what you see here. It's you got a couple of stairs pointing inward. Uh, and I will mention the uh, the slabs here are optional. You technically don't need those. 
I prefer them, it seems to give you a little bit more enclosed feeling, but they are optional if you want to cut those out. Okay, so for the spawn platforms on either side, this is going to be symmetrical here. From the edge of your stairs there, come out 15 blocks of nether brick. Alright, and then up from there, 14 of those blocks are going to be what you want as spawnable, and the 15 one here is just for your enclosure. I prefer glass panes, it makes a nice look there, but obviously if you want to save the glass, you could use solid blocks or whatever you want there. And then just give it a slab roof on the bottom slab there, so nothing can spawn on top of your farm, and carry this all the way back down. And that is it for about 99% of your farm, so just take this and stretch it all the way down the full length of your farm. Leave a little bit of space on the ends, and I'll show you how to build those end caps. All right, once you have the farm built to the length that you want, you're gonna to wanna to build the end caps over here. So here we go, on the end now, you're gonna to to put a chest on that one block past the last daylight sensor. Put a chest there, that's obviously where you're gonna pick up your nether skulls and all that stuff. Take an iron bar and place it right on top of the last daylight sensor, just like that. From there now, you're gonna to wanna to take some hoppers, Put one into the top of the chest and two into either side, like so, so that they're all facing and obviously the wither skeletons are going to die up there, and wherever they die, the items will go into the chest down below. Okay, now what you're going to do is want to make some stairs for the withers to, or the wither skeletons to climb up. So two stairs like that, do it on either side, like that, and like that, and then go ahead and fill this all in in between with solid blocks, like so, da 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 and then put a little bit more back there. There you go, you get the idea. Now, from up here, you're going to break out these two slabs right there and put more iron bars there and there. And then on the other side, even with the end hoppers, you're going to want to break out three more. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so that they, it looks just like this. One more block past the end of the stairs there. That's just the right spacing and gaps and everything you need for the wither skeletons to climb up there, but not ever be able to hit you. Now, from there, you can go ahead and take some slabs and just even this out right up here with the ceiling like so. And then take this ceiling over here and just even it up with the edge of your farm. So this is going to be the outside edge of your farm right here. You can even add a couple more spawnable areas right here. And take this glass and ceiling and wrap it around so it all meets up nicely right here. Okay, once you have everything enclosed all in there and tidied up, you need to put like a little roof on top here. And this is so that gas can't shoot in from this rare angle here. Because it'll happen and you'll be sad when it does. So to do that, there's a lot of ways to do this. I like to... Put some nether brick on these corners right there, there, and there. The important thing here, though, is that the roof is three blocks. There's a three block air gap in here for the wither skeletons to fit up inside here. But uh, here's what I like to do. Like I said, just put some slabs under all this here. Again, a lot of this is just for looks. You could do whatever you want here, just as long as it's going to block uh, gas from shooting you. Take some glass panes and put some uh, a line there. Again, this is if you did glass on the outside of your farm, this would match and make it look a little bit better. And then from there, just go ahead and put some slabs and put a slab roof on this whole thing. Okay, now for those of you paying attention, you're probably asking yourself, how do I get inside this thing right now? And that's a very valid question. So there's a couple of things I can recommend here, okay? One is if you wanna come in from the side, you could do something like this, okay? Just obviously do too high wall here with some buttons all the way down to stop spawning. That could be carpets or whatever. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff here. Just don't use slabs here. Because even if you take this up three high, don't use slabs. Because then there's the mobs on this side will aggro you as you're in the hallway. So uh, no slabs, just buttons or carpet or whatever else you want to use to stop spawning in there. That's kind of the quick and dirty method. The other option is to do something a little bit better. If you're going with the glass panes route, you could do glass panes like this all along the side. Looks a little bit better. You could even leave them the bottom open here. I think that kind of looks nice. And then some carpet here as your walkway entrance in. Kind of gives you a hint for how spawns are looking too as you're coming in. Now, obviously, both of these side entry options are going to have the downside of as you are pulling mobs, you're going to run into that wall there. So any mobs from here down, you'd have to pull that way. Any mobs from the other side down, you have to pull the other way. So you might want to consider doing this down toward one of the end caps to, to reduce that awkward cross over there. That is a, an option there to consider. Um, the other thing, the other way you could get in, which I haven't done myself, but theoretically, if you want to come up from the floor... It should work just fine. You just have to add a few more slabs here so that blaze don't aggro you through that gap there when you're coming up and then just poke a hole through, put your ladder there. And then generally for the most part, you'll you'll run right across when you're sprinting, but there's sometimes you might bump and it gets a little bit annoying and stuff. Uh, you just gotta be careful you're, when you come up the ladder, you don't jump up too high. The important thing is with all these designs is as you're coming in, don't aggro the mobs. Okay, one last note here because I'm sure many of you will ask and that is, can this be stacked? The answer is definitely yes, okay? 
So from your main corridor line here, what I would do is in your entry area here, I would be able to stick our ladder up like this. It's probably what I would do. I haven't done it. There might be other options. Obviously, again, the, the entire point is just don't aggro mobs as you're going up and down between the floors. Uh, something like this would work. I would end cap off this like this against, you know, as you're up here. You, you know, if you didn't end cap that, you don't want to be able to see the mobs over there. So solid blocks all the way up there. Uh, and then once you're up here, you're good to go. At this point, you know, your ceiling isn't, not a, isn't a ceiling anymore. It's the floor for your next level. Pretty easy stuff. Most nether fortresses are tall enough where you can actually fit nine levels of spawn platforms if you really want to go nuts. Uh, and the other thing to consider if you're really going crazy on this thing is maybe put a, uh, a, a run speed beacon in here so that you can run up and down these corridors a little bit faster. It might help. Just something else to consider. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today. If you thought this design was pretty clever, you liked it, do me a favor and hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And if you are new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing if you want to see more tutorials just like this one. And uh, as I said, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. This is Tango, and I am out.